So, a fair while ago, I made a video stating my case as to why Eugene Fitzherbert, aka Flynn Rider, the love interest of Rapunzel, was my definitive and the best of the Disney dudes. And not gonna lie, I think my opinions were pretty well received at the time, as, well, he's a pretty popular guy, pretty popular character, he's very wholesome, he treats Rapunzel well, he doesn't regard her as an object, he changes as a person over the course of the movie, He's just good, and I was satisfied, and I locked it away in the memory banks, moved on with my life, got other videos to make after all. Until a little while ago, when I started noticing more and more comments referencing what I'd said in that video, and a lot of them actually disagreeing with me. And I won't lie, I was a bit surprised by that in general, because I thought I was right. <laughs> but fair play, people disagreed, and so I looked into it a little bit, and whilst there were a couple of names tossed into contention, there was really one that rose above the rest. One name that people held up as their personal and definitive Disney dude. The best of the bunch, the cream of the crop, the king of the mountain, and that is David from Lilo and Stitch. And honestly, I think I get why I didn't consider him when I was discussing this topic originally. Because I just don't think he's quite as important to the overall film as some of the other guys. So he sort of faded away into the background. Same with all his subsequent appearances in the extended media. Like, yeah, he's important from time to time, but for the most part, he's kind of irrelevant. But regardless, I figured today would be a good day to see if those people were right, and that David from Lilo and Stitch is the definitive, the best, of the Disney dudes. Okay, so previously, I determined that a lot of the Disney dudes were largely generic or problematic in some way. They simply couldn't measure up to Flynn Rider. And honestly, I'm not going to go back and go through every single one of those characters to see if they deserve a second chance because, I don't know, it's a lot of people. And I'm kind of lazy. But I did want to take a look back at Flynn Rider and see if he holds up as well as I remembered he did. And I think for the most part he does. In the film, he remains rather awesome. He's charming, funny, a really interesting arc with clear progression, stakes and consequences, a clear affection for Rapunzel and a desire for her to be happy even at a cost to himself. So yeah, he's looking pretty good. Love me some Flynn Rider. Or some Eugene, I guess. Although, let's be real, nobody calls him Eugene, do they? I really hate using his real name. No offense to the Eugenes. But that might be a, a me problem. Anyway, I was fully back on the bandwagon. Flynn Rider is the best Disney dude, or at least I thought he was until I made the mistake of looking into the show. And since it has the OG voice actors, made me think it was supposed to be treated as part of the story. I don't know if there was a different creative team here, and let's be honest, there probably would have been. I think this was made by the TV animation studio. And so, yeah, the overall big takeaway I had from the show is that Flynn is an insufferable man-child. Like, Jesus. Half the time I'm just sitting there praying that this dude's gonna shut up. He is absolutely one of the most annoying, selfish, and rude characters in the show. To the point that his character feels like one of those parody characters you might find in like Total Drama Island or something like that. Characters that are purposefully exaggerated to make you laugh at them for being so pathetic, or make you feel super annoyed. Although in the case of Tangled, I don't think he was meant to come off so gratingly. He's one of the protagonists, but to me he just does. Absolutely the worst. Ugh, no thanks. And the worst part is there are those moments where he almost feels like he's the classic OG version of the character again, and you see those positive traits shining through. He's fun to watch, he's charismatic, caring, and cool. And then he becomes annoying and cringe again, and just end up feeling depressed about it all. Look at the mask of my boy. How are you going to do this to poor Eugene? And look, I know there's going to be some defenders saying the show's non-canon or whatever, he's not that bad. You know... I know you can pretty much treat this as two separate canons, but I feel like it has, in retrospect, coloured how I view him in the movie too. And so, I think it actually opens the door for David to swoop in and steal away the number one slot. For him to climb to the mountaintop. To be my number one Disney dude. Sorry, Eugene. That's just the way it is. And I'll be honest, as I did a bit of research into David, and the more I kept looking into it, the more I started to realise, oh shit, he really is just the most awesome character ever, isn't he? Like, in pretty much every conceivable way, he seems to be absolutely perfect. Perhaps he's not the brightest of bulbs, but that's okay, you can't have everything. And I guess we can just walk through the film, and then even his appearances in, like, the director video sequels, since, well, they continue to illustrate just how much of a chad this guy really is. And really, it's time for a good old-fashioned word vomit, just to illustrate my point. And yeah, for starters, I guess we'll go with this. He's stupid, as I said just a moment ago, or rather, he's less intelligent than you might suspect. Which feels like a bit of a strange and contrary point to make to him being the best Disney dude, but it's true. Because I think it adds an endearing puppy dog quality to the man. He's a bit simple, a bit slow, and it makes him seem like a bit of a sweetheart. So trusting, so willing to listen, so willing to get involved with anything they're up to, so accepting of all the weird shit that's going on. There's no snark, no quips, just good vibes. That's what you like to see. But that's just the surface level stuff. Let's take a look at his actions during the course of the first movie. 
Prior to the beginning of the first Lilo and Stitch film, Nani and Lilo's parents were killed in a car accident, and so, instead of moving on with her life, being able to do what she'd originally planned, Nani's left to raise her six-year-old sister Lilo, and she's struggling to hold down a job, Lilo's struggling, has no friends, and she's at risk of losing Lilo to foster care should she not prove herself to the social worker Cobra Bubbles. So, suffice to say, she's under a whole lot of pressure right from the get-go. And then we have David. Now, David clearly has feelings for Nani. This is made extremely apparent from the first moment we see him. The dude is supremely thirsty, but she makes it very clear that she's busy. She doesn't have time to worry about dating. All she can focus on is finding a job and ensuring that Lilo is safe, fulfilled, and living the best quality of life possible so she doesn't lose custody. Because, you know, that would be a major bummer, wouldn't it? Losing your parents, then your little sister gets taken away into care. And does David complain about this ever? Not really, no. Does he coerce, plot, or scheme to try to make himself seem desirable? Does he sulk and make her feel shit for not reciprocating at that particular moment in time like many other men before? Nope. Dude just gets on with it. He lets her vent, he constantly provides her support and kindness, and when she gets fired from her job at the restaurant, he goes ahead and organises a day of surfing to cheer up her and Lilo. Which, you know, it's not like it was a huge sacrifice to go surfing with them, but I think it shows that he is filled with compassion. And on top of that, it's him who saves Lilo and Stitch after the wipeout. Yeah, he even bothers to save the very obviously freaky dog thing, Hero. And hey, this isn't his only contribution to the family because the very next day, it's him who brings Nani a new job opportunity that she can go to pursue that very day. Once again, it shows he genuinely cares. He's not asking for awards here, he wants to help. He wants to help her keep Lilo from going into care. Pretty noble. But wait, there's more. Yes, because in the ultimate climax of the film, Lilo and Nani's house is destroyed. Whoops. And they obviously don't have the funds to actually get a professional to properly fix it up. And so the film concludes with old mate David, who does not seem to be a professional builder, given that he works as a fire dancer type thing at a local restaurant, which, you know, you'd assume that a builder wouldn't be moonlighting at that job. And so you guess he probably doesn't have all that much handyman experience or know-how or really money either to pay for things. And yet the dude is volunteering to help them fix the house. What a man. He isn't in much of the film, in all honesty. He's largely consigned to the background of the story, and I think that went a long way in me sort of forgetting he really exists at all, but yeah, simply looking at him from this perspective, he feels very ideal. Like, yes, he's not the noble prince coming in to save the princess. He's not the hero of the story. He isn't rich, he isn't powerful. He's not going to be able to sweep Nani off her feet and allow them to live happily ever after, but bro's capable of listening, of understanding, of respecting Nani's wishes and grasping the concept of consent. He doesn't make her feel like shit for needing space, and he takes things very, very slowly. He understands he doesn't want to make her feel pressured or selfish or ungrateful. He just goes about his business, waiting for her because he has that hope. And until then, he'll just stick around being her friend and her support system, and allowing her to go at her own pace. David, are we sure he's not called Chad? And I guess in a way, he does have those moments of being the dashing hero swooping in to save the princess. He saves Lilo from drowning, and Stitch too. And he finds Nani that job. And he works to help rebuild her house, like I said. Does this have the same life-changing impact that some other Disney dudes might have on their lady friends? No, not really. But that's because, apart from the space elements, the sci-fi, and the aliens and explosions, ultimately Lilo and Stitch is not the type of film where everything's going to be easily solved with good intentions. It's more realistic than that. It's more about being together as a family even when times suck. Even when the hard times keep on coming with no end in sight. And in my eyes, David is just the real ride or die. And also, unlike most of the other Disney dudes, or at least the Disney dudes that actually have a semblance of a personality. Sorry, Prince Charming. Oh, this doesn't feel real enough yet! <laughs> David doesn't even really have an arc in the story. He just likes Nani, he loves her, he wants to be with her, he loves Lilo too, he wants to help out and make sure everything's okay. But he doesn't change. He doesn't develop. The dude was already like this. He was already perfect. Five stars, what a lad. And whilst he doesn't feature all that prominently in the extended world of Lilo and Stitch, after all he's mostly a background comedy character, there are some pretty wholesome moments still, particularly in the show, that just keep showing off the overall quality of this dude. At times in the show he tries to teach Lilo things. Like one episode he teaches her about the concept of yin and yang, when she and Stitch are fighting and struggling to work together. And so she takes his lessons on board and reconciles with Stitch. Or there are episodes where he just goes out of his way to make Lilo happy. Not even Nani, just Lilo. At one point, they sneak into a private hotel pool, just to make her feel better. And I think the most definitive proof of his quality is just how much Lilo seems to love him. She gets upset in the show when she thinks that Nani's shit-talking him for being stupid, and then she views him as a key component of her idealized perfect family. 
I mean, this dude is just some mildly dumb late teenager, early 20s surfer guy. And yet he's playing the role of older brother slash fatherly figure to this little girl who he really owes nothing to. There's no obligation that he needs to meet. And yet despite that, he does so, and he does so with no expectation of reward. He does it because he's a good person. Man, yeah, the more we dig in, the more I realize I was wrong. This dude is the definitive Disney dude, the best of them all. I was a fool to not think so. Please forgive me. And so with all that being said, not much else to say other than these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of David? Is he the best Disney dude? Are you on board with me? Maybe you disagree. Perhaps you'd like to throw somebody else's hat in the ring for me to examine. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.